So all your support letters are mailed out and your supporters should be receiving them probably even as we speak. So now to move on to part two, which is phone calls and coaching. Now we have seen students receive about a 50% response from their supporters when they made phone calls. We've actually seen an increase in this to where students received a 98% response from their supporters when they made follow-up phone calls. Now, how did students get to this place to where they made every single follow-up phone call even to the eighth time? And that was through coaching. Coaches came in and helped us to be faithful, help us to be strong, and help us to see the bigger picture even at times when it's difficult. Our coaches are so loving that at times they're mean. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 27.6 says that the wounds of a sincere friend are better than kisses of an enemy. Now Glenn Davis said it best when he was coaching a young gentleman during a time of fundraising who was procrastinating. He told him with every procrastinated phone call you make, you're not just failing yourself, but you're failing your team. With every faithful follow-up phone call, we are taking one step closer to delivering the love and power of Christ to a people who are desperate for Him. So, coaches are going to love you so much, they're going to be mean at times. But they're here again to keep you focused, to keep you faithful, and to help give you a bigger picture view in times when it seems hard to see that big picture. They're here to encourage you, and they're here to rejoice with you in every victory. Okay, now I know some of you guys are getting a little anxious and wondering who your coach is going to be. Don't worry, your team leader will notify you of who your coach will be. For some of you guys, your coach may be your team leader, which would be a great bonding experience for you guys. Now your team leader is going to give you the dates for the dates that will make history. These are the dates of the time frames of when you will be making your phone calls. Now they'll be broken up into these sections. It will be when you will make your first phone calls, the time frame of when you'll be making your second phone calls, and then the time frame when you'll be making your third and fourth phone call because by this time you will have already contacted and um, got in touch with probably about 40 to 50 percent of your supporters. Um, then it'll be the time frame of when you'll be making your fifth and sixth phone calls, and then when you'll be making your seventh and your final phone call, your eighth phone call. Now, if there is for any reason why you feel like you need to um, contact somebody beyond the eighth time, for whatever reason, go ahead and talk that out with your coach and talk that out with your team leader if you feel like you want to make another phone call to them, um, not just eight. Maybe you want to go for nine and ten. Um, maybe you got a hold of them one time um, or two times, three times, and you know if you kept calling them that you would get a response back from them. And that's totally okay. Just make sure you talk that out with your coach and your team leader if you are going to go beyond eight calls. All right. So some of you guys are getting a little nervous right now wondering how is this whole scheduling making phone calls going to work because you have work and classes and different things. Don't worry, you are actually the one who is going to be making the schedule for your phone calls um, and you'll be handing that into your coach. Your coach will hold you accountable based on the schedule you make. Um, and so right now I'm going to go over a couple of suggestions as far as when to make your phone calls before you make that schedule. The first thing is on the weekdays it's recommended that you make phone calls from about 6.30 to 8.45. This is really to accommodate families, um, people who've come home from work around 5 o'clock or so. It gives them a little bit time to actually come home, relax, um, get a little bit comfortable before you um, call them. Um, a lot of people who are running back after work, they're not like to pick up their phone call um, around when they're coming into the door of their home. Um, also, after 8.45, um, it just gets a little bit harder between dinner, between putting children down to sleep. Things like that can make it a little difficult. So that's why we recommend, if you can at all, try to make phone calls between 6.30, 8.45 on the weekdays. But again, these are all recommended times. If you know your supporters um, work graveyard shifts and it's better to call them on the morning, or if you know that they put their children down at 7.00, so you can actually call them at 8.30 or 9 and they will pick up their phone because they stay up a little bit later. You know your supporters, so if it works for them and you know oh, it will work, um, that's great. The whole point is that you actually make a schedule based on when people are going to be most available so you can get in contact with the most people. Um, the other thing is on the weekdays, Saturdays, it's recommended that you um, 
call between about uh, 11 to 5. Um, again, this is because usually Saturday mornings people try to sleep in, it's their day off, they want to relax, and then at 5 they're usually going out, so if you're calling them around 7 um, or 8 on a Saturday, they're in the movies, they're doing different things, and it's just going to make you have to leave another message. But again, this is all based on, um, this is a, a majority consensus type thing, but if you know specific people will be available during those times, or they told you to call back on a Saturday at 8, then go ahead and give them a call back during that time. Sundays, it's recommended about 2 to 9.15. Sundays are usually the days when people stay home. They usually don't go out. Saturdays are usually the day people normally will go out. Sundays, you have church. You don't call before then. Um, but So usually around 2 o'clock is the best time. And then all the way to 9.15 if you're available to make phone calls up to then. Um, it's usually the time people stay home and they're more available to answer their phone calls. A couple suggestions too for you guys is when you're scheduling out your phone calls and you're going to be making call families first and leave singles um, to the very end of the evening mainly because um, families usually calling them in the beginning of the evening is better than calling them later because whether they're going to sleep whether they're putting children down or whether they just want some time together as husband and wife it's usually best to call them in the morning so those are just some suggestions for things again you know your people the best you know when to call them um, just depending on their schedule you want to call them on when it's going to be most convenient for them to actually answer their phone calls all right so you guys have received a blank schedule together with the part two training. Um, the blank schedule is for you to fill in your class schedule, your work schedule, any other extracurricular activities that you have that are weekly. So um, whether whatever it is, all the way from church to a tutoring center to anything else that you have that's a part of your weekly schedule that you are required to be at, that you have maintained, um, go ahead and put that in. From there, you are going to be putting in the blocks of times of when you're going to be making phone calls. So if you know from 5 to 8 on Mondays you can always make phone calls, then you go ahead and write in that block of time from 5 to 8, shade it in, those are when you're making phone calls, and write that in, phone calls. This schedule is going to be made a copy of and is going to be given to your coach. Your coach is going to hold you accountable according to the schedule you give him or her. And so that is what you're going to be held accountable for. Also, you want to put down estimated of how many phone calls you think you're going to be able to make during that block of time. Obviously, don't go overboard. You're not going to be able to make 50 calls in two hours um, unless nobody answers the phone. But um, you want to be make sure that you kind of put an estimate to make sure that you do hit all 50 people within um, that, especially those first two um, time frames for your first and second phone calls. That's when you'll be making the most amount of phone calls. So you want to make sure that you do hit everybody. So get an estimate and make sure you're giving yourself enough time to make all of your phone calls. Um, you have to give more than uh, three hours to phone calls a week. You need to be able to give more so you can um, actually call all 50 um, people. Also, you guys, don't worry about getting caught up in a phone call. If you had planned time frame from 5 to 8 to make phone calls, you thought you were going to be able to make at least 15 phone calls, but then you got a hold of Aunt Betty on your 10th phone call, and she just caught you up because she hasn't seen you forever, and she just wanted to talk to you so much, but she's also giving you $200. You know, talk to Aunt Betty. It's okay. <laughs> Um, and uh, don't worry, just revise your schedule, talk with your coach, revise those different things, um, and just make sure you stick with the time frame. Um, but don't freak out if you uh, kind of get readjusted as you're making phone calls because you get caught up in a couple of phone calls. It happens, um, especially within the first two time frames of making phone calls, your first and second calls, um, because a lot of people haven't heard from me in a long time and they want to hear what God is doing and this great work you're moving in. All right, so we're actually, um, after this, you guys are actually gonna hit pause. You're gonna fill out your schedule. So that's gonna be fully completed. When you're done um, filling out your schedules, go ahead and hit play again. And we're gonna go through the phone protocol um, and what the phone protocol, what the script looks like on actually making phone calls. So if you're wondering, man, I've never done this before. How do I make a phone call? What do I say? Don't worry, I have all the answers from you, but after you fill out your schedule. So hit pause, I'll see you in a little bit. Now that your schedule's done, and if your schedule's not done, hit pause, finish your schedule, then hit play. 
All right, so now that your schedule is officially done, um, don't worry about that, put that aside, and let's go through the actual protocol of what it looks like to actually make phone calls. Now, a um, couple of guidelines as far as making phone calls. Um, one is never apologize when making a phone call. Um, you're not sorry, don't pick up the phone, I'm so sorry that I called you. Uh, don't be sorry because it, it really sets an atmosphere, it sets the mood of the phone call. Call them with the excitement of what the Lord's doing and the greatness of your expeditions trip. Begin first of all with the greatness of what the Lord's doing. Um, also surround yourself in a great atmosphere, okay? Um, don't be calling in your dorm room, maybe if it's discouraging or there's people loud. Set yourself in a great atmosphere for you to make phone calls. If there's a bunch of noise in the background, it's going to be really distracting to you and to the person that you're contacting. So a um, couple of students a couple years ago um, got together at UC Merced in the Tuolumne Lounge and they pumped themselves up, put on Eye of the Tiger, and uh, right before every single person went, they jumped around and uh, cheered and shouted. Um, they prayed, prayed in the Spirit. I just want to encourage you, if that helps you, do that. If being around a lot of people doesn't help you and it gets you distracted, don't do that. Set yourself up for success. Make sure your atmosphere is going to best help you finish all of your phone calls. Um, but definitely pray in the Spirit. If you need to put pictures of your expeditions trips um, before you to cast vision, do that. Put those in front of you. Put the Word of God in front of you. Get vision behind yourself of why you're making every single phone call um, and be there with excitement when you're on the phone. Also, a couple things that help is actually smile when you're on the phone. It really helps even your tone. Um, you'd be surprised, but just smiling and talking on the phone just helps to where your voice even sounds exciting and encouraged. And that stuff really does translate over the phone. Um, also remember, you will be asking each supporter for the specific amount that you prayed over um, in part one. Now remember part one, we prayed over all 50 names. We asked the Lord for what amount to ask them specifically. The Lord built you up with faith. Now you're going to be held accountable to ask for that specific amount. Your coach will ask you if you asked those supporters that you called for that time block if you ask them for the amount that you had put down. If you didn't, your coach will ask you to call them back and let them know what the Lord spoke to you to ask them to support you in. All right. Now, um, obviously, if you ask the Lord, the Lord told you 100 and the supporter said, no, I want to give you 300. Take the 300. It's OK. <laughs> also, you'll be using your supporter call log to keep track and keep yourself organized, which we'll go through. Um, that will help you to be organized and after every single um, set of calls that you make, every block of time, your last phone call will be to your coach. You'll call your coach, give your coach an update, and the very last thing you'll do is also uh, send the support call log to your coach at the end of every week so your coach has a great idea of where you're at and making all of your phone calls. All of you guys will receive from your team leader the support raising phone protocol sheet. Okay, so you guys will be able to have this when you guys are making phone calls. It has the script with you. I highly recommend that you keep this in front of you um, until you've made about 25, 50 phone calls. Um, then from there it will be a lot easier. But it's um, the best thing to have in front of you. And then if you get in the sidetrack of a conversation, it's great. But that way if you get caught off guard or something like that, you have it right in front of you. Biggest thing is, uh, just don't be robotic about it. If you're just reading it and it's impersonal, your supporter is going to fill that over the phone and it's going to be really awkward. Uh, so you just want to make it personal. You want to make it yourself. Um, and most of all, you want your supporter to really fill your heart even through the phone call conversation. All right, now to give you guys an example of actually making a phone call, kind of what it looks like. Um, and to not be robotic. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do a little example for you of a greeting and introduction and then also transition um, from that greeting introduction to the actual ask. Hey, this is Vanessa. How are you? Good. Hey, I was wondering if I can speak with Auntie Linda. Is she home? Great. Hi, Auntie Linda. How are you? I know I've missed you so much. Um, hey, I was actually wondering if you had a couple of minutes to talk. Yeah. Oh, great. Wonderful. 
Well, I was actually just calling um, in regards to a letter that I sent you recently about my expeditions trip. I was wondering if you received it. You did? Great! Yeah, no, I was wondering if everything made sense to you. It, it did. I'm very excited as well. <laughs> I'm excited. It's an amazing opportunity. I'm so happy to serve. Why I know. Well, I was actually calling you. I wanted to ask if you would be a part of a group of 10 people that I'm asking to partner with me at $100 um, to help me minister to the people in India. Do you think that's something that you'll be able to be a part of? Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Again, it's required that you ask for the specific amount that you prayed over and you ask for that person. So I know at times it's very hard when you're in the moment and you're talking to somebody and they say, yeah, I got it and I have my baby and I have this and I have this, this, this going on. Um, and it can be very nerve wracking to actually finish through and actually ask um, for them to be a part of what the Lord spoke to you. Um, and, and so it can be very difficult. but. Be faithful to ask, and you'd be surprised how many people will say, man, I was going to give 75, but I can totally do 100. I was going to give 25, but I could totally do 50. Absolutely. And how many people you'll hear and will speak to you and say, you know what? I can do more than 100. I can do 200. So um, just make sure it's very vital that you ask for the specific amount that the Lord spoke to you to ask them for. Also, this phone call is not over. There's something very specific you want to ask. You want to ask the amount and the time of when that donation will be in. Okay, it's very um, important that you have all the details so that way we just know where we're all at as a team and we know um, for us, as far as our budget goes, how much is rated because you do have specific deadlines that you need to make sure the money gets in by. So here's the example. Yeah, no, I understand, Uncle John. Yeah, no, it's perfect. So um, I was just wondering if you could tell me, though, the amount that you will be able to give. Just so you know, I really am accountable to the leadership at Calva just to demonstrate the progress in raising my expeditions budget. And it would just really help me to keep record of what I'm receiving into my account if I knew the amount that you would be able to give. $100? Wonderful. No, thank you so much. No, really, it's really, really helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah. No, it's great. Also, our team has made it a goal to purchase our plane tickets by the end of the month in order for us to save a significant amount of money on our airline ticket. Um, is there any way that you would be able to send your gift in by next week so that would help us get to our goal? You would? You'll have it in by next week. Thank you so much, Uncle John. Thank you. Yeah, I love you too. Okay, bye. So here's an example if one of your supporters wasn't able to send it in by the next week. You're not able to? No, I understand. Do you mind if I ask when you would be able to send it in? Just so I can turn in my accountability sheet of my pledges to my team leader and give the most accurate account of where my budget's at. You'll be able to send it by the end of the month. Okay, no, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, I love you too. Bye. Also, just a couple of things. If they need time to think through it, um, sometimes you'll give out an ask and you'll ask for an amount and they just need some time to think about whether that's something they can do. Especially if they weren't planning on maybe giving us much, but they think they can give that much. They just need, need some time to be able to think that over and budget their finances together with their family. And that's okay. But you always want to make sure the ball is still in your court and that you initiate the next phone call. So here is an example of doing so. Thank you so much. You'll give me a call back. Okay. No, well, th thank you so much. Just thank you so much for taking the time to really perfectly consider this. I know that um, you know that I'm really focused on raising support right now for my trip. And I'm accountable to leadership at Kyle just to demonstrate where I'm at on my expedition support. So would you mind if I take the responsibility of calling you back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So um, if I were to call you back um, maybe on Monday, would that work? 
Would that be a significant amount of time for you? It would be good. Okay, Monday's good. Okay, and this is the best number to reach you at, right? And Okay. And um, the time, would it be 5 o'clock? Okay, great. Wonderful. I look forward to talking to you again. So I'll call you back Monday at 5. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. So that's just a quick example. Again, everything you want to note in your call log. CB, Monday, 5 p.m. Make sure you keep all your notes nice and organized so you know um, that you can make those phone calls at the time that you told them you'll be calling them back. So here's an example for intercessory phone call making the ask. Hi, Auntie Linda. Yes, I'm so excited about this opportunity to serve. Uh, I really wanted to ask if you would be a part of a group of 10 people that I'm asking to partner with me for $100 to help me minister to people through a two-week night and day prayer mission. Do you think that's something that you'll be able to be a part of? Great. Yeah, $100. Thank you so much, Auntie Linda. Yes, I'm so excited to bring the kingdom of heaven down in prayer. It's going to be a really awesome time of intercession, and I'm really looking forward to it. Love you so much, too. Super simple. Just a few words of a different change from the global expeditions. So another example for the intercessory expedition is the amount and the time specification. Yes, Uncle John. Well, I was just wondering if you'd be able to tell me the amount you would be able to give. Just so you know, I am accountable to the leadership of Kyle to demonstrate my progress in raising my expeditions budget, and it would really help me to keep record of what I will be receiving into my account. $50? Awesome. Great. Now, our team has made a goal to raise our expeditions budget by the end of the month. These funds go towards resources, support that we need, travel, resources food and accommodations to make our permission possible. Would you be able to send your gift in by next week to help us with the school? You would? Great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Uncle John. I love you too. Bye-bye. So as you can see for your intercessory expeditions, there's just a few um, word changes. You will get a different phone protocol than the Global Expeditions, and you'll be prepared for those couple of different changes um, from the Global Expeditions. Now we're on to um, an example about leaving a message. So if you don't get a hold of them and you need to leave a message, here's an example of how to do so. Hi, Uncle John. This is Vanessa. I'm calling you about the recent letter I sent you in regards to an expeditions trip that I'm going on this summer. And um, please give me a call back at your nearest convenience. And if not, I will give you a call back by this Friday if I don't hear from you. All right. I love you so much. Can't wait to talk to you. Bye. So as you can see, very simple. Again, remember, you want to keep the responsibility of contacting them on your court. Um, you never want to put it on their court. Um, always welcome their phone call back from you, but always put it in your court to call them back. Now, the best one, of course, is the big thank you. That one's not too hard, right? Yay, thank you so much. That would really help. Wonderful. Love you. Now, whether they say $10 or they say $10,000, you always thank them. No matter what the amount is, no matter how much they're giving, it all is benefiting the kingdom of heaven. And so thank you, Lord, for every single pledge, every single check that comes in. Thank you, Father, for every amount, no matter what it is. It is a huge blessing. And thank you for your people being sacrificial givers to your kingdom. All right, so here's an example of what to do when you call somebody and for some reason they didn't receive your letter. Um, do you hang up and then say, I'll just call you back when you read it? No, you can explain it to them over the phone. So here's an example for that. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm really sorry you didn't receive it. Yeah, but it should be on its way. Um, if you have a minute though, I would love to tell you more about it. Yeah. I have a great opportunity to serve together with some other college students this summer on an expedition trip to India. And we are in the process of raising funds. And I was wondering if you consider being a part of a group of 10 people that I'm asking you to give $100 to help send me on this trip. Is that something you think would be possible? You would? Great! Wonderful. 
Okay, um, I do want to make sure that I have the right address though in case for some reason I need to resend that letter to you. Yeah, there will be a giving envelope inside. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's the address I have. Okay, so the letter should be on its way. Thanks so much. So, again, especially people who didn't receive the letter yet and you know that within the time frame they should have received the letter, you want to make sure you get their address just in case for some reason you had it written down wrong or for some reason when you wrote the address down it looked like a three and it wasn't and you know there's just confusion you have to resend the letter. So here's an example for a follow-up if you haven't received someone's pledge. So if they gave a pledge to you and for some reason you're not seeing them on your financial update, you want to give them a phone call follow-up back to see if they had turned in their money um, just to make sure there's no mistakes, um, whether it be on our end um, or maybe on theirs. Hi, Kathy. Yes, it's Vanessa. I was just calling in regards to um, our last conversation about my expeditionist trip that I'm going on and your generous gift of $100 to help send me. Um, yeah. Well, the expeditions team leaders require us just to keep a log of our gifts um, that have been sent um, by my support team in order to make sure that we're just not missing any donations in the mail or anything like that. Um, and if you don't mind me asking, have you had a chance to send that in yet? No. Yeah. No, I absolutely understand. I totally understand. Do you think it would be possible for you to be able to send that in the next week? Or would you need some more time? Um, would that be better for you? In two weeks? Okay. Perfect. In two weeks. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a great night. Okay, bye-bye. So, it just helps you just keep an accurate running log of where you're at um, and where your supporters are at. Now remember, after every phone call, you need to make sure that you're updating your call log. It's very important that you keep all your details organized and up to date on your call log. You will be needing to email that to your coach weekly. So you need to make sure that you have that all up to date and that keeps you better organized so you know where you're at with your phone calls. So make sure you log in the calls that were made, the time and dates that they were, they were made, any notes that you need to make about calling anybody back, when you've left messages, when people have made pledges to you, and when you've received them. Also, you want to make sure that you have written down when you said thank you to them as well. Remember, make sure you're utilizing all your phone protocols and your scripts to make sure that you are saying everything that needs to be said. And if you ever get nervous, you always have those words right in front of you in case you get a little choked up. So take advantage of all these resources that have been given to you. You are going to have an amazing time making phone calls. It's going to be full of excitement and the Lord is going to bless the nations through your faithfulness and also through all of your supporters. So excited.